Hello everybody. In this video, I discuss about the BSc topic, 5th semester, paper 5 of Dongere University and session, 4th session. So, today's topic is Summerfield's Relativistic Atom Model. So, in this, I am go just going to give the postulates made by the Summerfield and not going to touch upon the derivation part of it. Okay, and also I will give the definition of critical potential. So, let us first understand the Summerfield's relativistic atom model postulates. So, before going to this theory, I would like to recollect the Bohr's theory here. When we have a Bohr's theory uh, convincingly explaining the atomic model, so naturally the question arises in the mind that why this new theory, okay. So, Bohr's has given the entire picture of the atom that is he calculated radius of the atom, he calculated energy of the atom and also he gave that expression for the wave number and wavelength or frequency of the spectral line arising in the atom. So, and also he explained the atomic spectra of hydrogen atom. According to Bohr's theory, the hydrogen spectrum consists of five series of spectral lines that is Lyman series, Balmer series, Bastian, Bracket and a Cohn series. As this Balmer series is lying in the visible region, it has a significance, okay. So, the first member of the uh, Balmer series is called as H alpha line and the second member is called as H beta and so on and so forth. So, according to Bohr's theory, each of these spectral lines are well defined. Well defined means, so each of these spectral lines have a specific wavelength. But when these spectral lines observed with a high resolution spectrograph, it was found that each of these lines are packed with a closely situated spectral lines and this is known as fine structure of the spectrum. So, Bohr's could not give the explanation for the fine structure of the spectral line here. So, in order to give the explanation for the fine structure of the spectral line observed in the atomic spectra, the summer field theory has been introduced. So, Summerfield uh, modifies the Bohr's theory by making a simple modification and his modifications he uh, formulated as two postulates. Let us try to understand what are the two postulates given by Summerfield in order to give the explanation for the fine structure. His first modification to the Bohr's model is the electron is not revolving in the circular orbit as in accordance with the Bohr's theory. Instead, it is revolving in an elliptical orbit with nucleus at one of the poles. Okay. So, but according to Bohr's theory, we know that already we have studied that the nucleus is situated at the center and the electrons will be revolving in a circular orbit. So, this is the first modification made by the summer field that the electrons are not revolving in a uh, circular orbit, but they are revolving in a elliptical orbit here. So, once the elliptical orbit is considered here, con then uh, considerably the velocity of the electron will be different at different parts of the path of the electron here. So, in order to uh, give his theory, he considered the relativistic variation of uh, mass of the electron with the velocity. So, these are the two postulates. The first postulate is nothing but it. I will repeat once again here. The first postulate is electron is revolving in the elliptical orbit with nucleus at one of the foci. And the second postulate made by the summer field is as the electron is moving in an elliptical orbit, the velocity of the electron considerably changes at different parts of the orbit. So, it follows a relativistic variation of mass with velocity. Thereby, his theory got the name relativistic atom model. So, with his theory, he uh, convincingly explains the fine structure, but he could not give the exact number of spectral lines lying in the fine structure of the spectrum. So, this is all about the Summerfield's uh, postulates. Okay. So, next I am going to give the explanation of the critical potential. And uh, we know that the electrons are distributed in different orbits and the specific number of electrons will be there in the different orbits and we have already learnt in our basic classes that the first orbit can be accommodated only with a 
two electrons and the second orbit will be accommodated to the eight electrons and so on so forth. So, as this nucleus is positively charged and electrons are negatively charged, there will be a nuclear force is acting between the, these two here. Now, in order to make the this, uh, electrons which are in, revolving in a specific orbits are referred as their ground state or normal state. So, whenever if you want to raise these electrons from its normal state to some other state, okay, so that phenomena we call it as an excitation. Okay, so the each of these electrons in its orbit have a specific energy values as in the case of hydrogen atom we know that. So the uh, hydrogen has a only one electron revolving in a first orbit. Okay, so the electron in its ground state this can be referred as a ground state here. The energy of the ground state electron in the case of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 electron volts. Okay. So, the, in order to raise this electron from its normal state to the excited state, minimum energy around 13.6 electron volt to be supplied here. So, this energy that is the minimum energy required for an electron to raise from its normal state to the excited state is known as critical potential. There are two types of critical potential. One is known as excitation potential, the another one is ionization potential. So, let me give the definition of an excitation potential. That means excitation, the phenomena of excitation is nothing but a raising the electron from its normal state to the uh, excited state. Okay. So, this phenomena is known as excitation of the electron. So, the definition for the excitation potential is the minimum energy in electron volts because these energies are measured in electron volts here. So, the energy required in electron volts to raise the electron from its ground state to or normal state to the excited state is known as excitation potential. On the other hand, if you want to remove to completely uh, electron from its uh, orbit is known as ionization phenomena. Okay? So, the definition for the ionization potential is the energy required in electron volts to remove the electron from its orbit and taken to the uh, infinite distance from the nucleus is known as ionization potential. So, these are the two basic definitions I wanted to give in the this video. In the forthcoming video, I am going to give the explanation of determination of these critical potential. Okay, thank you. And for further uh, explanation, you please watch my next video. Thank you very much.